Bonjour everyone, je suis Paul from Grindhouse Funny House and uh, today I will be sharing with you my top 10 picks for this year's Fantasia Film Festival which goes down from July 12th to August 2nd. This is their 22nd edition and from the looks of it, it looks like a pretty kick-ass one. I started going to uh, Fantasia in 2011 and uh, I even did some uh, volunteer work for that year and the year after. I even got the t-shirt to prove it. Um, some of my best memories from the festivals were things like um, seeing John Landis getting his uh, Lifetime Achievement Award and talk our ear off for like two hours straight. The man is a chatterbox and has amazing stories. Uh, I remember seeing a, a midnight showing in 2012 of Samurai Cop which changed my life for the better. Uh, uh, seeing movies like uh, Roar or Dead Snow 2 or Turbo Kid, uh, other Lifetime Achievement Awards like uh, Guillermo del Toro in 2016 and uh, last year when uh, Larry Cohen, one of my favorite all-time directors, got his as well. Uh, all amazing cool moments uh, Fantasia has given me being the huge Jean Cinema fan that I am. I feel like um, this festival was just like tailor-made for me, so I'm always super grateful that it exists and uh, hopefully for many years to come. So with that being said, I went through this year's entire schedule, made my choices as to which movies and events I'll be uh, attending, and uh, I wanted to share those picks with you. So uh, here we go. Let's start with uh, Nightmare Cinema. It's a new horror anthology put together by Mick Garris, who was behind two big Stephen King miniseries in the 90s, uh, The Stand and The Shining. He created the horror anthology series Masters of Horror, and you might remember his 1992 movie Sleepwalkers about a mom and her son being werecats vampires feeding on virgins life force who also happens to bone each other. You know, it's a... Uh, it's your typical family movie. Uh, so five directors, each having their own vignettes. Uh, the set the setup being a group of uh, strangers meeting up in, in a forgotten haunted theater who are shown those stories from a mysterious projectionist played by Mickey Rourke uh, and also starring Richard Chamberlain, Annabeth Gish and Elizabeth Reeser. Uh, a ghost story, an exorcism, a black and white descent into madness plastic surgery gone wrong and a cabin in the woods slasher are the stories being shown to us all these from Roy Kitamura known for the midnight meat train uh, David Slade who made one of the best vampire movies in the arts with 30 days of night Alejandro Bruje who made uh, one of the dead back in 2012 and uh, was featured at Fantasia that year uh, Mid Garris of course who will have his own segment and finally my personal favorite Joe Dante will also receive that night a Lifetime Achievement Award, or the uh, Chevalier Noir as it's called, who's given every year to a deserving filmmaker honoring his or amazing oeuvre. This man, this is the man behind Piranha, The Howling, Gremlins, Inner Space, The Burb, Explorers and Matinee, and so many other, all classics and all movies I personally love and own. Uh, all the Nightmare Cinema filmmakers will be in attendance at the world premiere, which opens at the festival July 12th at the Theater Hall. Uh, the next day, Mick will do a special episode of his podcast, Postmortem, and all of them will show up again to discuss the movie and I'm sure their own projects. It's a, a free event at the York Amphitheater. Up next, another anthology and a very nice surprise when this was announced because uh, I feel the first one is, the, is a bit underrated and that's Tales from the Hood 2 from uh, Rusty Cundiff and produced by Spike Lee who also produced the first Tales from the Hood back in uh, 1995 taking over the role of uh, Mr. Sims played by um, Clarence William III who's the uh, ringmaster of all the events that's going down in the movie is Keith David he of two classic John Carpenter films 1982's The Thing and 1988's They Live so once again back in the hood with uh, stories of lust greed pride and politics involving demonic dolls possessed psychics vengeful vixens and historical ghosts this is going down july 13th at theater hall next is five fingers of death aka king boxer a 1972 kung fu movie made by the shaw brothers in japan directed by joan cheng ah and starring lo lee it's uh, pretty much the movie in the United States that kickstarted the Kung Fu craze. Uh, the next year, Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon was released and brought it even to an even bigger level. 
Um, the plot is pretty simple. It's two martial arts school preparing for an important tournament and uh, wackiness ensues. Uh, it wouldn't shock you to learn that it was one of uh, Quentin Tarantino's favorite kung fu movie back in the day, even to the point where he used the Iron Fist musical cue in Kill Bill. Uh, the original Mandarin version in 35mm Shawscope will be shown with English subtitles. It's uh, on July 13th and 29th at Salle Géa de Sèvres. One of the genres featured at Fantasia are action movies, and uh, this year they will give out their first Action Achievement Award to Cynthia Rotrock. She was a five-time world champion in forms and weapons between uh, 1981 and 1995. She holds seven black belts and sashes in multiple Far Eastern martial disciplines, uh, including Tang Song Du, Taekwondo, Eagle Claw, Wushu, Norton Shaolin, and Pai Long Tai Kung Fu. My God, <laughs> uh, just to say that the lady, knows, the lady knows quite well how to kick your ass and my ass, probably at the same time, without giving it a second thought. Um, 1983, Golden Harvest was searching for the next Bruce Lee in LA, and they found her, signed a contract with her, and two years later, she made her first martial arts movie for them titled Yes, Madam, uh, also known as Police Assassins, with Michelle Yao. Uh, she ended up staying in Hong Kong till 1988, Doing seven more films there, she moved back to the States where she did a slew of B-movies like uh, Chan O'Brien 1 and 2, Martial Law 1 and 2, Guardian Angels, Honor, Glory, No Retreats, No Surrender 2, the list goes on. Uh, on that night, they'll show 1989's The Blonde Fury, which we're looking at clips right now. Uh, it's a Hong Kong production directed by Oi Meng, showing in the Cantonese version with her in attendance to receive her award and do a Q&A after. This goes down July 17th at Salle Géa de Sèvres. Every year, Fantasia sets up really cool special events, uh, things like uh, conversations with people, uh, old screenings of movies like black exploitation, horror, what, what have you. Uh, those special events this year, one in particular, is a live conversation with Michael Ironside, who is an awesome Canadian character actor. You know him best for hundreds of movies, literally hundreds, playing tough guys and, and uh, or really bad guys. Uh, my personal favorite of his are things like Scanners, Extreme Prejudice, Total Recall, McBain, Free Willy. He was in Free Willy. <laughs> and Starship Troopers, to name a few. Uh, most recently, he was in 2015's Turbo Kid and uh, one of this year's selections at Fantasia, Knuckleball. He'll talk about his uh, many film roles, working with people like uh, David Cronenberg, Tony Scott, Walter Hill, James Glinkenhaus, Paul Verhoeven, and talking about the craft of acting itself. It is a free event, event uh, should be really fun. It's at the uh, York Amphitheater on July 20th. Up next, The Man Who Killed Hitler and then The Bigfoot. It is set in 1987 about a World War II veteran who assassinated Adolf Hitler but cannot reveal this information to anyone. Now in his twilight years, the FBI and the RCMP reaches out to him, knowing what he's done, and gives him one last mission. They need him to take out Bigfoot. That man is played by Sam Elliott. He and his majestic moustache will get it done. Uh, running out the cast are Kathleen Fitzgerald, Ron Livingston, and Eden Turner. Uh, there's no trailer for this yet, but I am 100% already sold on this. It's a feature film debut by writer-director Robert Krasinski, and uh, the visual effects are done by legendary two-time Academy, Academy Award winners Douglas Trumbull, who did the effects for uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey and Blade Runner. So uh, this thing's going to look fucking amazing. Uh, Sam Elliott will be there to answer all of our questions. How cool is that? This is going down July 20th at Theatre Hall. Another pick, Chuck Steele, Night of the Trampires, a British stop-motion animation movie from Mike Mort. Uh, based on a short film, Chuck Steele, Raging Balls of Steel Justice, shown at Fantasia back in 2014. It is a, it is a feature-length homage to the 80s action films we all know and love. So, sort of a Kung Fury type, but more animated. Literally. Uh, set in 1986, Chuck Steele is the best goddamn cop on the force, doesn't follow any rules, he ex ex exasperates his captain with his violent methods, 
but he gets the job done and keeps the street of LA safe. A wave of high profile disappearances occurs across the city and Chuck Steele is on the case trying to figure it out and bring the culprits to justice. The screening of Chuck Steele Night of the Trampires goes down July 21st at Theatre Hall. Every year I always try to catch a South Asian martial arts movie at Fantasia. Uh, a film I'll know nothing about and just give it a chance. Last year was um, Jailbreak from Cambodia, which really kicked ass. And uh, one that really paid off was in 2011 when I saw The Raid from Indonesia. You all remember that one. Uh, this time around, it's an entry from Vietnam. It's uh, titled Loi Bao from Victor Yu or Yu. Uh, it's a superhero movie and I'll give you the synopsis Fantasia provided. Tam's a young artist working hard to create Vietnam's first comic book series about superheroes. Unfortunately, he has to put everything aside when his girlfriend gets pregnant. Choosing to marry her and give her his dream for his family, six years later, Tam tries to find inspiration again when he diagnosed with lung cancer in his final stages. With no good options before him, Tam decides to end his life into the Nirvana forest. His longtime friend, Professor Ma, saves him, and during this miracle <laughs> Miraculous rescue. Uh, they witness the death of Ninya, an infamous gangster of the uh, Dalat underworld. Professor Ma uses this opportunity to convince Tam to take part in an experimental treatment. Surgery will be performed on Tam, switching his body with Ninya's. During his recovery, Tam experiences strange side effects in addition to seemingly superhuman strength. His new body has secrets of his own, and when those demons start surfacing, Tam's wife and son are put in danger. Tam will have to become a true superhero if he wants to save those he loves. Uh, to me, just this, this uh, summary and watching it it has shades of 1991's body parts with Jeff Fahey and a bit of John Woo's face off for good measure. Quan Seven is the lead and uh, from watching the trailer right now seems to be kicking all kinds of asses. So uh, I'm pretty pumped about this one. Uh, it'll be shown July 22nd at Theater Hall. The next to last pick, uh, Summer of 84. This is one I'm really super excited about. It's from the RKSS Collective. That's uh, Francois Simard, Anouk Waisel, and Yo Johan Karl Waisel. The pride and joy of Quebecois Jean Cinema and the people behind everyone's favorite bloody post-apocalyptic rump, Turbo Kid, which won the uh, Best Canadian or Quebec Featured Audience Award back in 2015. It's uh, actually, it's one of my favorite of that year as well. Uh, this time around, it's about a group of kids hanging out during summer break, having all kinds of crazy fun until one of them suspects that his next door neighbor is the Cape May Slayer, who's been going after kids his own age where he lives. Um, he enlists the help of his buddies to investigate and try to prove that he is in fact the killer. Uh, film and TV is hot right now on anything 80s and doing homages to that decade. I mean, obviously Stranger Things comes to mind, though they said the script uh, not written by them this time around, but my uh, Matt Leslie and Stephen J. Smith was written before the show came out. Uh, Montreal Synth Waver's Le Matos are back on scoring duty, sounding much like they did for the Turbo Kid soundtrack. And uh, believe me, that's a really good thing. Uh, the Canadian premiere with the cast and directors in attendance goes down July 14th at Theatre Hall. Saving the best for last and closing out this year's edition is Mandy, starring Nicolas Cage and directed by Panos Kosmatos. Uh, when the trailer dropped last week, I was really hoping Fantasia had it on their roster and was happily surprised when they in fact did. Uh, here's the synopsis from Fantasia, which I think only their words give it justice. Here we go. The peaceful existence of Red Miller, Nicolas Cage, in the Shadow Mountains of 1983 is burned to the ground when the deranged religious sect fixates on Mandy, the love of his life, and as is soon made very evident, a significant grounding force in his universe. Things deteriorate into a tranced out nightmare of insect venom, hard drugs, and broken minded delirium as Red journeys into hell in order to avenge the woman he once lived for. Blood will flow in rivers, worlds will collapse onto themselves. Uh, that is it. <laughs> When's the last time you saw a good Nicolas Cage film? He's been in direct-to-video film hell for many years now, only a few times where the old Cage would come out and give out a great performance. 
I'm thinking of movies like uh, Joe or uh, This Year's Mom and Dad. Now he seems on, uh, on an upswing and this could be his comeback in crazy rage cage mode. Uh, cage wielding a giant chainsaw in battle has already sold me on this, but uh, it also looks pretty trippy and surreal. Uh, they even got Bill Duke, badass character actor from the 80s and 90s, played Mac in Predator as a role in this. And uh, we get uh, an electric score from the late Johan Johansson running this out. Um, my level of excitement is pretty damn high for this. Uh, Panos Kosmatos will be there to present it. Could a Nicolas Cage appearance be in the cards? Crazier things that happen at Fantasia. Uh, this will be shown on closing night, August 1st at Theater Hall. That's it for my top 10 picks. Hopefully you saw something in there that's uh, interesting enough to uh, give it a shot. And uh, let me know if you did. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, section below. Uh, also in the video's description, I'll put links to all the films I've talked about and events just so it makes it easier for you to uh, purchase those tickets. Aren't I nice? Uh, the tickets will go on sale. Everything will go on sale tomorrow, July 7th, Saturday at 1 p.m. either at um, Fantasia Quarter or on admission.com, which by the way is probably the best bet. Um, buy them early because uh, some of those will sell out very quick. I have a feeling uh, Mandy, that one's probably five minutes out so uh please like share and subscribe click on the tiny little bell so you'll never miss an update from me uh also can check out my instagram at uh grindhouse funhouse where i post on the daily uh my facebook page at grindhouse funhouse and on twitter at grind funhouse and hey if you recognize me at the festival see me around walking or just waiting outside uh just say hi i'll be nice i promise uh and on that note thank you very much for watching and uh i hope you enjoy the festival as much as i do and uh, i shall bid you adieu for now